Genome sequencing company GeneDx surpassing $100 million in revenue for the first time in its most recent quarter. A lot more than that, though. They also talked about how they're raising their guidance for the fiscal year. They flipped to a profit from a loss in the previous quarter and saw some pretty impressive growth, particularly when it came to exome and genome testing sales, which were up by 69 percent. The company screens for and diagnoses rare diseases in newborns. And joining us right now is Catherine Stulin. She is the CEO of GeneDx. And Catherine, thanks a lot for coming in today. Thanks so much for having me. So your stock, your stock is up about 13 percent this week. Your earnings were out just a couple of days ago. Big pop on this. What happened that the street was not anticipating? You know, what we've really been focused on at GDX is diagnosing children with rare diseases. And today, the problem that exists, um, children aren't getting access to this testing. It takes, on average, five years for a child to get diagnosed. So we're trying to raise awareness. We're trying to make sure that clinicians really understand that this technology is accessible to them. And then we're trying to make sure that these families have answers sooner than that five-year diagnostic odyssey. Today, we can deliver an answer within weeks, if not hours. And, and part of the problem with the diagnosis is pediatricians haven't known what to look for. Your kid gets diagnosed with global development delays for the most part, or maybe intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to try and get that? Because these are expensive tests. They're, they're not cheap. Well, what's interesting is they historically took a really long time, and they were expensive. But we've been able to get the cost down. We've been able to make the turnaround times fast. We can actually do a whole genome in 48 hours. Wow. And so we've actually removed cost as the barrier. Most insurance companies pay for it. And that's in part because of the health economic benefit that we can provide. So it's a unique test in that it provides better clinical outcomes. Earlier testing mm -hmm. gives families and clinicians more options to be able to give these children a healthier chance to live longer lives. Um, but we're also delivering really important savings to the healthcare system. Um, there, in that five years where there's a diagnostic odyssey, um, the healthcare system is paying for the cost of these symptoms and the lack of a diagnosis today. So using testing early actually helps ensure um, that the right answer gets to the right families to make the right decisions for clinical care. And nobody does this better than GDX. What, what is the cost today? Just what it's come down to? So most insurance companies are covering it. What we get paid is about $3,700 per test. It'd be nice to, to have this type of information um, allow you to, to figure out the pathology of the, of the disease itself. How many different markers are there? And are they all linked? Are they totally separate? It, do you know? Is it, can, is it hard to find out? Yeah, so we're making new gene disease discoveries almost on a weekly basis now. So today there's 7,000 rare diseases, um, which is part of what makes what we've built so unique. So it's in order to diagnose these diseases, you have to have a level of confidence that you, we're, we're, we're calling the right variants. Yeah. Um, and the way that we're able to do that, because we've run 850,000 exomes and genomes, um, they're all enriched for rare disease. 60% of the time, we're actually running testing on mom and dad as well. So the richness of that genotypic data asset that we've been able to accumulate. Is it shared? Or is it, could every individual have its own, their own mutation which causes a global development? We, we discover de, no, de novo de mutations novo, yeah, on, a, on a frequent basis. So. Yeah. Yeah, we, we are making it. So they're um, not necessarily even related, but do they all seem to have the same gene product? Do you know what it is? So when we are actually discovering um, a new mutation, because we've done this more than anyone, uh, we are able to upgrade or downgrade a variant of unknown significance more regularly than anyone else in the industry. And it's because we have all of the richness of the genotypic data, but we also have 7 million phenotypic data points. So think about all the clinic notes that might come in with an order about the symptoms, about family the history. Gene, the phenotype. Exactly, how, how it's to manifesting. narrow it down. And so it's, it's the totality of the, the data set that enables our experts to be able to upgrade or downgrade. So anyone can buy a gene sequencer, anyone can, can actually take that raw information. The ability to accurately get an answer to a patient from a genome's worth of information in order to drive clinical care, that's the hard part and that's what we do best. Catherine, um, 
rare diseases, they're called rare diseases because they're very unusual, they're very rare, they don't happen very often. But if you look at rare diseases together, these 7,000 plus that you mentioned, you're talking about 25 to 30 million people just in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have connections to this, including yourself. Why, why did you get involved in this? You know, I, I learned about rare diseases very young. Um, I was 11 year, years old and went to a, a family reunion and discovered that my mom's cousin had two children with cystic fibrosis, one of whom had passed away, the other was there and was very ill. Um, and so I went home and started raising money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Um, what I think is really remarkable about that particular example, that was back in the early 80s. Since then, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation raised money and really funded a lot of the early research that fueled discoveries that now um, are alive and keeping patients alive through Vertex. And so I think it's a really hopeful story for the rare disease community. It's the power of patient advocacy, um, funding research, and finding discoveries. And this is actually what happens to so many parents. Um, once they find out that they have a child with a rare disease, many of them are dedicating their entire lives to trying to find a, a, an investigational compound that might be able to help their if child. If you use this... Um what I call it, not magnifying glass, but I'm sure there's how many variants for autism and, and the causes of autism. That does not specifically a rare disease, but how many markers are there for, for autism? There's about 800 genes. Do we know what any of them do? Well, well, we do know that there are 800 genes associated 800 genes. with autism. So we actually, when we talk about testing, we're mainly in the pediatric neurology space, which is where much of our growth came from. Um, we're testing epilepsy, autism, developmental delay, cerebral palsy, um, amongst many other diseases. So we're focused in that pediatric neurology segment. I think part of what we're, we're really driving towards, the earlier you can diagnose, the, early, the earlier you can get these kids on a healthier path. The general pediatrician is the first line of defense for any parent. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics just updated their guidance for the first time in about 12 years saying that pediatricians should start ordering exome and genome testing mm -hmm. for children with developmental delay.